Hello and welcome back to CS38 Racing and we are on episode 1 of the Moto2 series. So, C Racing has to be careful and okay, sure, we'll be a little bit more careful, there's not a problem about that. Okay, so we are going down to Aragon. We had a horrible race last time out for our uh, debut in Moto2, but let's see if we can make it any better in Argentina. So we've got a dry race, dry practices, so let's see what we can do. Dry race, dry practice, everything looks good. Okay, so we managed to make it into the top qualifying here. Uh, excellent there from us. Uh, really happy to get through. So obviously we're going to run a soft front tyre and a soft rear tyre in this qualifying session just to ensure that we're getting the most we can out of the package. Let's see if we're going to adjust the ECU at all. Okay, let's go. So there we go, we've got all the new helmet, all the new look going for this season as we signed with the Idle Trans team, so a top team here. We definitely got ourselves into a good ride and hopefully it can even ensure us a position in MotoGP in the future as well, which would be really good. And if that is the case, we hopefully can get ourselves onto a pretty good ride in MotoGP, but that is a long way down the track. First, we have to focus on the Moto2 season. This isn't going to be easy. As we could see from race one, we did not have the greatest start to the season. This was something that was not what we wanted and not what we anticipated. Um, we definitely wanted to be faster and we needed to have a bit more pace, but overall, I was quite surprised that we were up in the top eight positions and seeing that we were quite competitive where I wasn't expecting us to be quite competitive uh, bodes well for the season so hopefully we can keep ourselves into the top ten getting top tens keep ourselves uh, running for the podium all of those kind of things are crucial uh, aspects of developing and having a good season okay so we're just going around on the warm-up lap here we're looking to maintain a good pace overall and we're looking to make a smooth and consistent lap time here because a smooth and consistent lap time is really what we're looking for. It definitely is what is needed in this situation. It is how this track works. It's sort of a nice flowing circuit um, and that is how we're going to get our time. So let's see as we come across the line what we can do coming into this first lap. So you've really got to come out wide on the straight here to give yourself the best entry into turn one. Start braking just after the 200 meter mark. That's where I've sent braked. I'm sure there's people that brake later than me and they are a lot faster, but that's just what I do. Okay. As we come into turn two, it's just feathering the throttle and the accelerator, keeping it nice and balanced. In the third gears, we flick through turn four. Turn three into turn four, sorry, I can kind of consider that all as one corner. Then you unleash the gears going down the back straight. Unfortunately, uh, this track isn't... Ooh, I've gone a bit wide here. But it's okay, it's just a bank lap for the moment. Um, it's unfortunate that this isn't going to be part of the... Um, MotoGP calendar in 2024. Uh, very good track. I bet Bezeki. I bet Bezeki is um, not happy that this isn't going on the calendar, as that's where his one of his wins. I think his only win or his win has come from anyway. So as we're coming around here, we're keeping it nice and smooth and trying to keep a very smooth line, using our Cobra as a little bit of a reference here to sort of guide ourselves on our line. All about the mid corner speed and the ability to keep the speed. Oh, Alcoba set up a lot quicker than I was expecting him to there. So we're maybe stronger on the brakes here than Alcoba. 
but we can use a little bit of his slipstream to come down to the line. So we're already 3.8 seconds ahead at this stage, but I feel like the likes of Acosta, Arbolino, uh, possibly Kinnett or Ben Snyder may even be able to bridge that gap. And if they're able to bridge that gap, then we need to get cracking with this lap again. As we come through this first sector, we're looking to keep the speed rolling. So we're already, I think, personal best at this. Was it personal best sector so far? Yep. Okay, can we get... No, we're wide here again. There's a twitch on the braking on the front. Big head shake. That is definitely not what you want to be doing. Okay, so we need to piece together a better lap than this at this stage, in my opinion. So again, we're just going to keep feathering the throttle, and now we're coming up to Alcoba's teammate of Salach. We can have him as a reference into this last sector to keep us looking ahead and maintaining some good speed. Excellent. Oh, they break early, so we're going around the outside, seeing if we can make that work for us here. Or oh, a bit of touching the curbs there made us wobble and run wide. So I don't think we're going to gain anything from this lap, and we're wide there, so that is not going to help us at all. Uh, as we only have one lap of fuel left anyway. So we're going to have to come back around to go into the pits. Oop, got a bit of a wobble there. Oop, whoop, more head shaking. Okay, we just had to run off track. Uh, weren't able to turn this one around this lap, so maybe let's go in, change tyres, and see if we can make any difference. Okay, so we're just going to come into the pits here, do some change some tyres and go for another run. See if we can improve our setup at all. So overall we're feeling pretty good around the track. We are 2.3 seconds ahead, which is a huge margin. Um, a, bit, uh, a lot better than I was expecting so far. So anyway, let's get in, let's change these tyres. So check the live session. We're just going to skip forward in the live session to see if our time holds. They've come under a second under eight tenths I think we're still gonna hold pole we still hold pole by 0 0.745 so excellent there uh, turns out we didn't need to do a change of tire we managed to make it work it wasn't the perfect lap but we made it work now let's have a look where our teammate is uh, we can't see where he is currently Okay, so we're down here on the grid. We're going to run a medium front and a hard rear tyre because it's hot and the ti the tyres are needed here in Argentina. Okay, let's get started with the race. So it's us leading from Acosta, from Arbolino, Vietti, Dixon, Ayagura, uh, Alberto Reynas, Lopez, and Canet take out round three, uh, row three. Gonzalez on row five. And let's see where our teammate is of Joe Roberts is on row 9 in 27th. 
Okay, so I think we're going to have to use Power Mode 3 off the line. I think that's going to be our best option here. Yep, let's jump up to Power Mode 3. And off we go. We managed to get an okay start. I think we're still going to be leading into Turn 1. I'm just going to ease into Turn 1 here. We don't want to push the tyres too hard and go down because of cold tyre, make sort of silly mistakes like that. Um, if we're wanting to prove that we have what it takes in this class, particularly as a rookie, as the former Moto3 world champion. Well, at least in the CS38 racing world, not in the real world, I suppose. Okay, so we can switch down to Power Mode 2 now. I don't think that we've, we've got enough of, of an advantage from Power Mode 3. Now we're just trying to stay smooth sailing, baby. Smooth sailing. That was better through that corner. That's definitely what we were meant to be doing in qualifying. Nice and smooth, just like a sailing ship through these corners. We've had a moment there, the rear stepped out on us, and we're lucky not to have a high side. So any advantage we did gain, we've just lost it there now. We've dropped down to 5th, with uh, Agura, go oh, sixth. Agura got through there as well. Uh, so now we've given ourselves a bit of work to do, we're on the inside of Agura. We're able to make that work. Okay, so now we've got a bit of a mission on our hands here. That mission is going to be getting back onto the podium position. At least the podium here. If not, the win would be even better, but at the moment, let's just focus on maintaining a good position. got some good drive compared to Dixon there and we're able to get into the slipstream of Celestino Vietti who congrats to him he is up in third we had not seen that from him in the 2023 season not like he had been in prior seasons so a bit surprising that he did get the Akiayo ride the ride of uh, this man here Pedro Acosta or one of the rides so we're through on Pedro Acosta there, we had supreme mid-corner speed. We're feeling good on the front, we're feeling confident that we can push the bike into the corner at this early stage of the race. Now Tony Arbolino, he is a tough competitor, so let's see if we can make ourselves... Oh, we had to pull onto the brakes there, he definitely swung into the front of our line. Very well played, it was a good tactic that we couldn't combat but we might be able to get some more edge grip compared to Arbolino at this stage of the race. He might be conserving and hopefully we're not burning up the tyre too quickly. And we're able to get underneath him there. We had to make a bit of a tough pass but we managed to do so and we're back into the lead with a 144.037. Not bad a lap time there. Pretty darn good. Okay, and we're just going to continue to try and hold this smooth pace to continue gaining on the pack behind us so that we can get a gap and if we get a gap then we can just manage the race from the front exactly like what Peko does uh, when he gets in front he's very much like that Okay, so we've managed to pull up a gap of 2.2 seconds, so we're definitely a lot faster than the rest of the field here. Thank you. 
Okay, so we're coming onto the halfway point of the race, and we've managed to set a faster time again of a 142.536. That may have been faster than our qualifying time. Oh, but we're deep here. We're giving away some precious time there. We've also switched to the Alpine leathers this season for something a bit different. I've always gone with Dainese, but um, we're going with something different here just to have a bit of a different vibe as we go into Moto 2, see how it works out for us. So we're really cruising here, we're able to maintain an absolute blistering pace compared to the rest of the pack. And seemingly it is not affecting our tyres, we're also in power mode 1, so we're conserving a lot of fuel in case we, our tyres do go off or the uh, following pack gains enough pace to mount a challenge. But overall, this is just sort of a nice, almost a uh, casual Sunday ride at this point, uh, though I do not want to put commentator's curse on myself here, uh, but we're definitely streets ahead of the competition. As it currently sits, Arbolino, Acosta, Dixon, Vietti, Ogura, Lopez and Arenas are taking out the top eight. So with, if we can bag the win here, we can really get some points up on the championship board and keep ourselves getting momentum as we go into the season to hopefully start turning some heads in the GP paddock and securing ourselves a ride um, for next season, which is ultimately the main goal. That's why we're here, right? We want to get to Moto GP. So, a race like this really proves our talent, our ability to ride consistently. In the game sense, I don't think it really works fully in reality, but uh, the important thing is, if we keep getting these results and we keep being able to breathe through to wins, we should be able to make a clear lead into the championship uh, in our first season which would be really impressive and something I wasn't fully expecting. And if we do win the championship, well then, yes, we'll go straight through to MotoGP. If we don't win the championship, that is also fine. Our main goal is to get to MotoGP. Because I would, fingers crossed, like to get out a full MotoGP season on GP23 before they release GP24. So probably going to have quite a few videos uh, like this and keeping it uh, maybe increasing the the release rate of the videos to two a week. We'll just have to see how it goes.
Okay, so we are definitely a lot faster than the rest of the pack here. 10 seconds up the road uh, at this stage is really incredible and something I wasn't expecting. I was expecting it to be maybe we could fight for the podium, but as it turns out, we've got enough pace for the race and by a long shot. So, if we can get, you know, three, four, five more, possibly even six more wins in the season, I think we should definitely be able to secure ourselves a ride in MotoGP. Let us know in the comments down below where you'd like to see us ride. Would you like us to go to Honda, to Yamaha, to Aprilia, to KTM, or Ducati? Um, I mean, if you were thinking completely logically and putting yourself in a position for being able to be competitive from day dot, you'd probably want to be signing with Ducati. Um, but I don't know, I just, I, I would like to give maybe the Aprilia or KTM a go. Um, I mean, the Yamaha factories, we could probably get in, but are we going to have as good results is going to be the question, because, you know, the performance uh, difference between the Japanese manufacturers and the European manufacturers is huge. Um, whether that fully translate, translates into the game mechanics, not entirely sure, but we do know in real life there are huge problems and huge differences between the Japanese manufacturers and the European manufacturers. So if we can try and get ourselves into one of those networks and then maybe do a season that and see how we go, aim for the top five, uh, if we can get anything more than that then excellent. Uh, so anyway, we're coming on to the last lap here. We are 11.8 seconds in front of the rest of the field. Oh, the rear wants to step out there, so we're maybe starting to use that left-hand rear side of the tyre a little bit more, and it's just crying no more, but we've only got a few more corners to navigate to ensure that this tyre can make it. Overall, the grip is pretty fine. I mean, the left-hand side and the right-hand side is expected to be quite low, as this is quite a high corner speed track, and uh, it also means that it's going to chew up the tire a lot more as well. So we're going to go into power mode 3 as well just to use up some of the uh, extra petrol that we've had from conserving and see if we can set a fastest lap of the race on the last lap which would also look good in the metrics so we're smooth into turn 7 here hitting the apex just correctly ensuring that we're keeping ourselves as neat as we can excellent through this sector would look like we're on for being faster than our fastest lap of a 142.536 was our fastest lap so far but we've managed to keep it sort of the mid to well actually mid to higher so not as consistent as we should be but still enough to rectify the rest of the field and do we manage to nope we don't manage to set a fastest lap we're 0 0.067 down but it's a win nonetheless all right, excellent. Victory at Termas. Good on us at CS38 Racing. Excellent win there. Oop, view the trophy. Okay, excellent. Got that trophy selected there. Cool. So, now that we've got the win, that puts us fourth in the championship, so we're back in the game. We're back in the game in quite a serious way. Championship, team championship, we are six. And that about rounds it out for this one, guys. So if you enjoyed this one, think about, don't just think about, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, show the love here at the channel, go watch some more of the other videos, and stay safe, have fun, Keep yourself playing these games, getting involved, reaching out, being a part of the community, creating a community where you don't feel there is one, all of that kind of thing. And keep your eye out for what's happening here at the channel with new and exciting stuff coming every week. Alright, stay safe. See you on the next one. Bye.